Again, we're here. is it a terrifying beginning? <laughs> oh, hold on. We don't have this. Wait, hold what? On. Oh. The logo. It I feels got it, I got like it. you got it. It feels like oh, I, each time we get started, we barely make it. Hi, I'm James Wesley. And this look, it's the Jesse reunion. So <laughs> keep that ski. Do not do. Okay, um, guys, the two shows a day. It was this is it literally was show number theory. forty-nine, not including the two three plays. So this is actually show number fifty-two. Our dog is barking in the background. Mandy cannot have enough food apparently. What eat. happens is she's been sleeping all day, and then right when the show begins, she starts she stressing decides. out. That's right. Welcome to Stars in the House. I don't know who's okay. <laughs> Mandy, honey. <laughs> Oh, the banner's on. I don't even know what the banner's on. It's a good thing we have a good friend here on a guest star because um, we're, just, we're all in the same boat here of making this work. If you notice, yes, we have some lighting thanks to not to Mandy who's barking in the background, but Brian Stokes Mitchell. So that's going to take care of things. He literally sent us lighting. I think he finally had pity on us and was like, "These poor guys." They need lighting, and so he sent us lighting. And yes, he is feeling very well. He'll be joining us, I'm sure, next week. Um, stars in the house is. Stars in the house. Seth wants me to, to fill in here while he, you, as you can see him, in the refrigerator. I don't know what he's getting, Mandy. Stars in the house is a twice daily. That's why we're so nutty. Uh, talk show with music and laughs and education with Dr. John LaPook, who will be here later on, the chief medical correspondent for both the CBS Evening News, or CBS News, and for Stars in the House. And I think, and so far, I th sh please share this link if you can um, with everyone you know. And uh, Stars in the House so far has raised over $175,000 for the Actors Fund. And the Actors Fund, as we say every single time, is not just for actors, it is for every professional in the performing arts across the country. That's actually probably the easiest way to say it, Seth. Every professional you can think of who makes their living in the performing arts, or actually, I think the, the, the barrier is actually quite low. You can have two or three jobs, as most people in the performing arts do, and still get help from the Actors Fund. And indeed, they are giving out a lot of help every day, $250,000 to be exact. Um, in direct financial assistance to people who need help from rent to medical bills to utilities to food um, all over the country. Um, I'm literally booking, is it, anyway, I'm booking the shows that's happening. Okay, it's all, <laughs> so the Rachel Dratch is coming. I'm very excited. Anna Gaster. Um, okay. I kind of think that's it. This is our first time to not really even have a show flow. We're talking about we're winging it. Yeah. So you, but the point we're, is, as long as you, it. as long as you guys share this, as long as you can donate, please. And literally $5 is the minimum donation. And if everyone donated five bucks, we'd have a lot. I thought you were literally about, about to press and broadcast. End of broadcast. <laughs> yes. That was the you show, were, guys. You were so close. The on stream yard, the comments is like that close to where it says the red button for end broadcast. <sighs> okay. Hold on. Yes, so. Not only was Anna Elphaba on Broadway, but Anna was school teacher in Geppetto with Drew Carey. That is true. She has two solid credits, and we'll be discussing that <laughs> very soon. Anna, by the way, I'm literally making jokes, and I've never seen more blank. I can see you watching Anna, and I just see a blank it face. It is a blank. Oh, now she's yeah, so not just this. I'm making jokes okay. trying to warm up the crowd. I'll and by the way, Rachel Tratch, you're also glaring. Cheer up, girls. Okay, so I'm gonna bring on our first guest of the evening, um, uh, star of, she was not only Elphaba, she was in Geppetto. Please welcome, <laughs> and by the way, meet the Needles. Please welcome Anna Gassaya. Hi. Hi, Anna. My, my stone face stare was me desperately, desperately trying to print lyrics to the song that I promised I would sing. Uh, the song that she's sang eight times a week on a national tour. You, know, you, you and I have discussed this. I, the, the minute I finish something, I dump the hard drive. It's out. <laughs> I mean, within within weeks, I think I told you, within weeks of leaving the show, my child asked me a very fundamental question about um, Wicked, and I don't remember the plot. I don't remember the plot at all. <laughs> Hold on. Do you, I, I don't mean to be a jerk, but do you think, you have, could, would you mind waiting to chop till after this? <laughs> Simmering marital tension. <laughs> Simmering marital tension. We understand. This, this is, is so why, awesome. now, now, this is why Anna's the perfect guest for tonight. Yeah, because do you understand? Simmering and also, if you say the word, if anyone says the word H E L L O, a, a barking onslaught will begin. Oh, a, it's a dog? Yeah. Dog will go bananas. And then, really thought, and then we'll be here all night. 
I literally thought it was Francis. I thought you were literally like Francis gonna get no, so no, 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 no. My my dog. We don't know why, but it's her. It's her. It's her. It must be her safe word or something. I don't know what it is. I can't say that word. Cannot say the word H E L L O. You're making me want to say. You're stressing me. No, it's like Pee Wee. Well, maybe at the end we'll do it just to prove it. Just to get her going. Oh. Okay, Anna Gaster, we got to discuss oh, hair. I've never God. seen you with that amazing. It's kind of a Meg Ryan look. What's happening? I love it. The '80s called. They want their hair back. Um, <laughs> this is this is God's perm. This is what the good yeah. Lord has given me. And as you noted earlier, I do look like I at my graduation in 1987, um, and uh, and or a member of the band Rush. Oh. I, I I'm not I. I, what can I say? I don't have I don't have a five hundred dollar Dyson hair fixer upper. So I decided to embrace. We're embracing so many parts of ourselves now, and we're 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 we're, we're indoors, but we're letting it out. And one of the things that I'm letting out is my natural curl. <laughs> it's actually reminding me of the look you said you had um, in string quartet camp. Why don't you discuss what that camp was? Oh, that was a great that was a great camp. Um, that was the death knell in my life as a violinist and the birth in my life as a comedian because I, um, it was it's one summer my, we, could, we went to Interlochen. I went to Interlochen twice, but in the middle summer, we couldn't afford it. <laughs> so I got, I did, I got swiped out, swapped out with a, the, the, the super prize of a special camp that I had been pre-signed up for instead of Interlochen. So when I was like, so am I going to Interlochen? Uh, it was presented to me that I was in fact already signed up for. <laughs> String Quartet Camp at Gettysburg College, which is a very humid area. And as I've told you before, it's so great when you're a 13 year old <laughs> pubescent um, first violinist. Because the thing is, when you're not, when you're not rocking a Brandenburg mm. with, a hot viol with a hot viola player, you're checking out some pretty amazing Civil War battlefields. <laughs> it really, it really spelled fun. Oh. Uh, I yeah, I had giant. I mean, the hair. I didn't know how to work the curl back then, so it was just more like a, a film, a general, a, a, a humid film over the hair. What was the quality of the skin in those days? Were you, were, are you a breakout lady? I wasn't, but I was four eyed. I wore glasses, you know. Uh, so I mean, I stopped. I stopped. So I'm blind in my right eye. So I was. I was be patched for a lot of my Sexy. childhood. Yeah. So I, I, until about fourth grade, I was be patched uh, with glasses and a and a patch and a violin. <laughs> so um, that's where my sense of humor obviously developed. Um, <laughs> And then they figured I did all these surgeries, and they're like, you know, she's just blind in that eye, so it's fine, just let it go. So I, that was it. So I could stop the glasses, but the skin was okay. Definitely, um, wow. like, you know, a member of a of an '80s term band, and uh, yeah, that's about it. And Sass I wore knockoff Sassoons from Marshalls. Wait, we Bobby were always forced to get dungarees instead of jeans in my family. <laughs> and we never could afford polo, nor Lacoste. Fox? And, no, no, La Tigra. Which La is Tigra. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we had factory reject Sassoons um, that were about four years after. No Jordache, no Gloria Vanderbilt. That was all well, like, also it was so sad because it was like by the time you hit the Sassoon trend, you were four styles behind. Yeah, it's like we had no money and yet my mom worked. There was always resentment towards the rich mothers in my neighborhood. Like, those women don't work. I'm like, but if you work, why don't we have money for nice jeans? We'll talk about it later. Anyway, I know that we've talked about your mom in this one story. Maybe I want to try to accompany this. Can you oh. please talk about when your mom said, um, oh, no. when, when your uh, your cabin roommate complimented how good you are? Let me see if I looking in the piano. Let's see if I have a prop. You know, when oh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where this is heading. When, when when your mom came to pick you up and they were like, oh my God, Anna is so talented. Yeah, well, I mean, you don't even need to accompany this because this is, yeah, that's that's true. So they came to pick me up after, you know, w investing way too heavily in this Gettysburg Chamber Music experience. Oh, do you see my product placement, James, by the way? Aren't you oh, proud? Right, your glasses. Those, are, those are my two recording. Oh recordings. yes, I see them. My, my Christmas album and my CD. Both, Love just a little product placement. Yes. I have those all the time in my living room. <laughs> People pop by. They know. They know where the tea's getting paid for from. <laughs> um, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, so Mariana Gasteyer uh, came to pick me up and um, everyone complimented me and they, they all said, oh my God, she's so wonderful. She's so great. And my mother said, I, 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 did you, I didn't realize that everybody had heard the Brandenburg and uh, said, oh, you know, she's so great when she does her lip syncing to Funky Town, which was my stock and trade there. I, I, I was really good at lip syncing, not singing, lip syncing. Funky town. <laughs> I'm no longer good at, by the way. So I'm not hold even. On, hold on, on it. Look, you got you have some shout outs here about your. Oh, your... From Deborah Alexander. Um, Thanks, guys. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Look so at that. You show sugar and booze. Did you actually promote it? We got to get well, promotion. Apparently, I was leaving. Yeah. I was being subtle about my product product placement. Subtle. But I'll just do this. There you go, James. Look what's look. By the way, look look. Wow! Wow! Look what's happening on him. We've lost yeah. all control. What? Uh oh, Mandy's there. Just oh jump my the god! Bench. And by the way, she's on the Ethernet wire. God knows what's going to happen. It sparks, it's all over because my dog's going to lose her mind. Oh my god! Okay, okay. okay. sweet. Mandy's I, my mom. Yeah. Now. Okay, so I want to just I want to just oh, yeah, show yeah, a little yeah. bit. Of, we have to Hold discuss on. something very yeah. important. What? So, what? The incredible singing that I witnessed. Oh. Um, when you were be masked. So let us oh, talk about the. Right. We haven't really discussed we, it. that. We we've never talk really about. talked about this. Yeah. So me and James watched yeah. the Masked Singer. We guessed it was you. Why did we? Why did we start? Because I think someone maybe maybe someone guessed it online. I don't even know why. It, we had not seen it the previous season. Nobody guessed me. Well, we heard it. We guessed immediately. We immediately. said it to Tina Fey. We said, "Who do you think this is?" She was like, "It's Anna." <laughs> and then I asked you, and it was a lot of like. It, it's a person. It was such crazy <laughs> non-answering. So I had to be very good. You were very good. You would not say. And it was drove me good. up the wall. Yeah. So, so many NDAs. So many NDAs. So yeah. how did it, it was infuriating because I knew it was you, but you would not admit it. So how did you get the gig? Was it just an open call? Yeah. How did that happen? How did you get it? How did that happen? You went to an open call. You stand in a line with 600,000 people with a bag over your head. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then they call you in. It's amazing. Um, you know, I had the Christmas record coming out and my man, you know, the, I really hate competition shows and I really, I, I, I was very averse to the idea of it. I did not want to go into a situation where I, I don't know, it just felt crazy to me. It felt crazy. And by the way, it felt crazy the entire time I did it. It's you, it, it is truly the craziest, one of the craziest experiences I've ever had in my life because there's a couple of things. First of all, um, you, you can't see at all. Like you really, your entire, as I mentioned, I'm blind in my right eye, so it might've been triggering, uh, but I could, cause I could not really see out of my left either, underneath there. Also, just for the, your, your audience, again, just it's just, You know what, the dog's gonna keep up, let, the, let that happen, just whatever. Let the dishwasher unloading. Uh -huh. You know what, it's fine. Charlie, yeah. keep it up, we don't it's care. Like, Anna, it bothers me when Seth does that, but Seth is like, whatever. He doesn't care if you don't care, by the way. <laughs> Like, <laughs> thank you, Charlie. Go on, you're wearing a full costume. A full costume, can't see. Then you have in ears in, which I have not had a lot of experience at. I'm used to singing in front of a microphone with with um, speakers in front of me, where I can usually hear my band behind me. I've worn earplugs before, but I've never been completely like buffered from the sound. Mm -hmm. And the thing about the in ears is they have a little mic, and so that just you only hear your own playback. You never hear anything else. You can't hear anyone else talking. You can't. Wow. They have total control over the board, which I found very disorienting. Um, so you're 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 kind of you're kind of in a sensory deprivation tank. And then the the third part that's really challenging is that you're if you are a real singer, if you have experience singing, the mask itself is right here right so to, like as a belter which is sort of the kind of singing you would do on that show ideally um it's very like the the i can't describe it but like the, your resonance is totally different like your sense of power i could never tell if i was how loud i was like it was very uh it was just a super weird feeling you're uh, singing live you're literally singing live you're not yeah. really well, you're singing, you know, it's all pre-recorded, but yeah, you're singing to a live audience once. You you're actually singing. Shot your, at it. your voice is not pre-recorded though, right? You're no, singing. your voice is not pre-recorded. So you're singing to track and right. you're singing in front of the audience and um, you can't see anything and you just don't have any control. You can't see, you never interact with anyone. You're like shuttled in, you know, from the hotel in into a car under a pseudonym in the car you put on that absurd Laverne Cox mask and your dumb zip up 
And, you know, it's like the dead of summer when we did it. So I'm wearing like a hoodie and a thing. And you have to cover all your skin tone. So you have on gloves and you have on um, like thick socks and boots. And then you're like shuffled in. The only people you interact with are like your direct segment producer and the vocal coach. And that's and the choreographer. You can't talk to the dancers. Like that whole thing made me really feel crazy. Like when I was in any rehearsal with dancers, I couldn't talk to them. I had to be in my mask. And so, wow. are you in separate hotels from every other, every other singer? Yeah, you don't know who anyone is. You're not allowed to know who anyone else is. So the whole, that's the other thing is they're like, I don't even know who like, you know, it turned out later. I mean, I was pretty sure that it was Patti LaBelle next to me warming up. But, you know, like I was like, that's a diva. Like I, I wasn't sure exactly who it was, but like, cause you could hear the war just through the like edges of the trailer, but that was it. I mean, there was no, no interaction at all. By the way, sort of like a weird precursor to this whole physical distancing thing. Distancing. I'm like feeling I'm isolated and you know what I mean? Yeah, You're not, not telling was really hard for me. I, I really hated that feel. I don't know. I'm like a connector and I really like performing with other people. I like, um, and especially as a singer, like I just, it was so weird because you also, you also like the, the move, the, I'm such a connected audience, I mean, performer, like I like to connect with my audience. I use jokes, you know, so, so much of what I was having to do was like this weird theme show acting. Like you definitely felt right. like, like waving with your big hand all the time and like lots of like chuckling. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, you're like, le you're learning, you know, it's like, there's just like another move in the playbook. You know what I mean? It's it's insane, and then and then you know like Robin Thicke is giving you feedback. Like it's the weirdest. Right. Well, yeah. the guessing was making me so angry. Oh my gosh! I'm the amount show. of timing, the amount of times that he talked back to the TV when they would guess. Because this first one you're gonna see, you sound amazing, and immediately as you belt, he goes, "I think it's Rachel Ray, who's no." Oh, which is my favorite anymore. thing, by the way. There was a very long streak during which they all thought I was a celebrity chef, and I love the idea that there is this secret cabal of high belting chefs that no one, like, don't you think that if Rachel Ray had like an E flat, you would have heard it at this point in, in her run? Just a little chop chop, you know? Ah! Like, I don't know, like, I, but I want to like go out on the road, like Anna Gasteyer and the celebrity chef. There was one day where they guessed I was Padma Lakshmi, Martha Stewart, Rachel Ray, and then I, I can't remember, there was one more. But yeah, I was like, the, it was made me so happy. I was like, I just love, I really do love that there is this, 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 this like fantasy band out there that Bobby Flay, Chef Bobby Flay is a killer tenor. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm showing the amazing belt thing. I'm gonna show the first, this is the first one that we saw that I, where we were like, this is Anna. Oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. I was about to get. Definitely you need me. Oh, hold on, it must be, it must be, hold uh -huh. on, I gotta make sure I'm doing the right what one. We can look it up. It's <laughs> Hold on, where's more? Hold on. Wait, I need you need me and I need you without each other. There ain't nothing people can do. That's what I'm obsessed with freedom. That's an F. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's high up there. I love that. I love that they found my people in the audience. That one fella having a great time. <laughs> really had, you know how many people? Because I, I went on the internet. You're supposed to like, you know, just you're trying to like guide the traffic a little bit in case people are guessing at you, which no one did for the longest time. Because I guess a lot of people just don't know that I sing. It's interesting how many people don't know, but outside of New York, anyway. So, um, I I uh, I lost my train of thought. You just got people <laughs> guessing in the audience. <laughs> Oh my God, that night I went on and four separate people on Twitter were like, I think it's Natalie Cole, who hashtag Maybe. passed. <laughs> Wait, just- I'm like, Literally, it's a dead, you're guessing dead people now. How, how much did you want to just break the NDA and just go, you're driving me crazy? Um, 
I was more worried to be honest about it with you, with you. Like I initially, it's such a popular show. Like I really didn't think that I would hear from Tina and the SNL girls for a while. I thought like maybe cause I knew I would be there for 10 weeks. So, cause I'd already done it. So I was, I, I knew like how close I was going to get. So I thought maybe later on, but you were like day one, just assume. I just didn't think I knew people that would be that engaged in thinking it was me, but it was pretty funny. How fast, you like, seem, practically within five minutes. You seem so unnervous singing. Like you so weren't marking any high notes, but that's sort of your signature is you're never really scared of any high notes. I'm not you? scared. T tonight I am. <laughs> this yeah, is I mean, you're, yeah, it's usually adrenal and you're having fun with it. And yeah, I mean, it was, I liked the little character. I was, I was there to sell the record. I was there to have a good time and be Christmassy. It was like, you know, I was nervous. I was definitely nervous because the situation was really out of my control. Um, but I definitely was having a good time doing it for sure. Okay, so two things. First of all, someone just called me out. Okay, Beth, I'm literally trying to get my video clips together, so stop <laughs> sassing me. <laughs> I was like, where's the video clip? So stop judging. Second of all, hold on. Uh, wait, no, there was another, there was a, a specific question. Hold on. Anna, wait. Well, someone just asked, what is the headless dog picture behind you? The headless oh. dog? Oh, it's just a photograph. It's not a very good story. Just an interesting photograph. It's like a okay. piece of art. Then they asked this question. A lot of people have been asking this. Are you allowed to say? Oh, uh, yeah, well, it was 10 weeks. I was there for 10 weeks. So it was, uh, I think they do two shows a week. So it's five weeks. It was long. It was long. Wow. That is. Wow. Yeah. I mean, but someone, someone is asking this old chestnut. I feel, I feel we got to go through a couple of old chestnuts. Ah. I'm going to bring on your pal, Rachel Drash, because I feel like she probably doesn't know some of these stories, and I think that she will <laughs> still appreciate it. Here's your SNL pal, Rachel Dratch. Come say hello. Hi, Rach. Hi, Rach. Hi, guys. Hi, you Rachel. Look, you look like you're 14. Uh, <laughs> that's because I'm sitting on a twin bed. It's because you're in your childhood home. Well, sort of, yeah. Not really, but a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm very shiny because I don't have the benefit of professional makeup. Same. Anyway, hi, guys. How are you? We're OK. No, we're okay. You know, we're you know, this is a, it's a, it's it's a lot of work doing these two shows a day, but it's really keeping us occupied to not kind of be stressed about anything else but putting on these shows. So it's like it's the kind of stress we're used to, not like other stress that everyone else is dealing with. But aren't you? Can you guys talk about what you guys are doing together, or is it a secret? Are we allowed to talk about it? I think it's a secret thus far till it gets green lighted. Can you at least okay. say that you're that you're? We're, we're writing. Yeah, we're writing a fun movie together. You're yeah. writing something together. Yeah, and it, we think it's pretty funny. We think it's really funny. Yeah. We're pleased with ourselves. We're excited about it. And then you know. hopefully soon we'll know if Yeah. Hey, what's your what's your writing? I touch my face at least five hundred times. Oh yeah, no, I'm I at least the camera, I'm always like, I mean, go on. What'd you say, James? I was just saying, so Rachel Lana, what's your since you said you're writing something together, what's your writing process? Because you're obviously not together. So oh yeah. Well, we use like FaceTime and this this uh, a, pro, a program called Writer Duet where you can. Which has been really great. Screen yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we set ourselves up on FaceTime. Ulysses McKittrick in the hizzy. Hi, Ulysses. What up? You're gonna do magic soon. Start preparing. Oh, that's okay. Cool. I've already prepared. But, yeah. yeah. He's already prepared. He's ready. Okay. In my day, we warmed up for two hours. <laughs> go on. Go pack. Go shuffle. Go shuffle. <laughs> You were saying, right? I want to. Anyway, what do you? Yeah. Is, it, is it final draft? It's something no. different, kind of, because you can write on the same yeah. um, script, like at the same time. It's, it's cool. cool. You can work having a time. Collect. Yeah, you can go off and write, and then the other person sees what you wrote. So, we, so yeah, we had a lot of time on our hands with all this. So we'd already started, but then once this all kicked in, you know, it was yeah. kind of good because I always said, well, if I was, you know, locked away, I could maybe write something, and then. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the hard part is, of course, like we're both moms, and so we're juggling a lot of. A mom. We're both, yeah. We both have small children in the home and older children in the home, so there's just a lot of laundry and cleaning, and there's a lot of life that you're doing, you know, as you guys know, and and um and homeschooling. Everybody's homeschooling. So. It sounds like Charlie's doing the cooking, though. That's what Charlie, it sounds. Like. Charlie's completing the cooking. I started the cooking, and he's 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 cleaning. He's he's closing the he's. He's doing half. And he's I don't want to get Anna off on a on a tear here, but she's oh, really boy. gotten into sourdough and all this, and she will not shut up about it's sourdough. It's really annoying. And you know, there's nothing worse than sourdough in terms of earthy, boring buzzwords like leaven and, and poofing. 
and, and on and on. Yeah. yeah. We don't really want to get her started, but I'm just saying that's what she's been putting all her energy into is sourdough baking. I've been, I've been making about two loaves a week, two to three loaves a week. You know, I got to feed the family. <laughs> okay, Rachel, I feel like you don't know me. Mm. Anna and I have this crazy history that I we would like to share with our audience, but I feel you will appreciate. Okay. It's basically horrific misunderstandings. Um, I will start, the first one was, we were doing a benefit together, and I said to Anna, what do you want to sing? And she emailed me, she's like, I sent the stuff. And I, you know, I knew she, she sent me the music, but I was like, but how many songs, and what are the songs? I was like, all right, I was like, but like, what do you actually want to sing? She's like, I sent the stuff. I'm like, right, but like, what's the name of it? It was very like, assumptive, like, just play what I sent you. I'm like, right, but like, what do you want to sing? And literally, I sent the stuff. I then found out after the third email, Anna, that what's the answer? The stuff, the song, the stuff from Me for Madness. Oh. It's actually a song name. It's so, the name of the song. It's like a who's on first situation. Oh, so it's I was like, why is she being so weird? And Anna was like, why is Seth so not supportive of my song, The Stuff? <laughs> I, like Joe. I had literally just done Reefer Madness. I think you had been at the premiere. He was like, mm, I'm not like that song. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of song is The Stuff? Okay, so then the second one was that um, I love um, I love the game Celebrity. You know Celebrity, you play, right? Of course. I love it. So I emailed... Anna, or I texted her and I said, oh, you come to my birthday? Because I love having game night birthday parties. I said, I'm gonna have a celebrity birthday party. And she was sort of, I think we we're on the phone, it was very weird. She's like, oh, hey. I was like, <laughs> why so, why, why are you not a It was like she agreed to it, but was really definitely uncomfortable. And then I found out three days later, Anna? You thought it, let me guess. You thought it was all celebrities? Mm -hmm. And then I wanted some like, I wanted the AP to come <laughs> and you know, get some good photos to help my career. It's the weirdest thing. Why would I think that, by the way? It's so stupid. But I also, like, why would you, my celebrity birthday party? I mean, you just said, I'm having a celebrity birthday party. I'm like, oh, God. I didn't know this was part of who Seth is. But I don't really like celebrities that much. Like, uh -huh. you know, I was just imagining, like, a room full of people I didn't know well. Oh, like, how do you know, Seth? Well, I don't know. Okay, so, horrible birthday, by the way. <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Anna, Anna calls me, and then by the way, now this is where I think Anna's shallow. Yeah. I was like, hey, Anna, how's it going? And she literally was like, oh, it's okay, but you know, my dad died a couple days ago. So I was like, and I said, oh. and I kind of saw him a little blue. And I was like, oh my God. And it's like, and I've got to do my act tomorrow. And like, I don't know my lyrics. And it's like, it was so weird. I was like, right, I feel bad. Like, some of your lyrics, it was so weird. You know, hard just to concentrate. I'm like, Right, so anyway, my voice is a little shot, I got a belt Fs, and it was such a weird, because I when she said it, I freaked out, but then she was so shallow for five minutes. So shallow. Um, go. Uh, my cat had passed away. My cat had passed away. And and I yeah, I do take a day for every animal. We all do. We all do, we take a day. So she, was um, she, of course, was so, she's like, finally, Seth gets it, because I was like, <laughs> oh my God, like, my reaction was so, <laughs> Somebody relates to how painful it was. I know because everybody, because you do like when you lose a pet, you kind of feel like you, oh. you have to apologize for it, but it's such a, it really flattens you for a couple of days. No, I, well, Anna knows that I, James and I were so in love with our dog, Maggie, like in love with Maggie so much. So Maggie passed away. It was, it probably was the most traumatic thing I've ever gone through. She passed away like two weeks from my birthday. So I get on my birthday an email from Anna and I open it up and it's Wait. just, it's five just pictures of Maggie with no explanation. Just no subject. Just <laughs> devastating images, like a creepy, creepy stalker. I was like, why would you do that on my birthday? On his birthday. How's this image? Do you like this image? How's this image of your dog? Did you know that Maggie had died? Yes. So here's what happened. So my mom is like the biggest fan in the world of, of, of Maggie and Seth. And my mom is a sculptor. And we were discussing this terrible thing and that it was Seth's birthday. And so I sent pictures of Maggie to my mom from which to make this beautiful piece of art. But I screwed up and I CC'd Seth. It was a photograph. So on his birthday, he receives like a million pictures of his dead dog with no explanation point. No, I mean, no explanation. And no. my and then my mom, my mom did make this beautiful story. There it is. Yes, it is. Maggie. That's cool. And it looks so much 
It looks so much like it's in our hallway upstairs. We yeah, oh, I love that. It's Amazing, so beautiful, so talented. The devastation was worth it. Um, <laughs> the deep trauma. Cool. I've at what? least like if it's a drinking game of how many times does Anna touch her face? Someone's Nothing. hammered. Someone on the internet is hammered right now. <laughs> Every time Anna touches her face. Oh, wait a minute, Seth. How? Because I remember oh, you being so traumatized by those photos. How long after you got those photos did you find out the truth from Anna? Oh, though? it was like 15 minutes later. No, it, it was? It, I was laughing hysterically. Because okay. first, first I was like, nice. Well, well, because we just don't have this history that it's just like, how can this continue at the level that it continues? It sounds like it's like astrologically based. I mean, Anna, I know you're kind of into that stuff. Yeah. Like it could be. signs or something. I'm well, a Pisces. Pisces, like Pisces. like you. Pisces. Yeah, all the best people. Yeah. Uh, okay, so hold on. We have to take, we have to take a medical break. A medical um, break? Yeah, we both have to change our lines. No, we're both about to bring in Dr. John LaPook, the chief medical correspondent from CBS. He's on every show. No joke, to give us medical advice and tell us what's up. That's right, Rachel Dratch. Dr. John. Oh, I my astrology talk, then. Ooh. Hi, guys. Hi, John. Well, um, you guys are good for what ails you. I'm sitting here. My face is hurting because I've just been smiling. <laughs> oh, thank you. The, the witty repartee. Um, and, um, I don't know, every laugh, I think adds a little to your life. It, it makes you live a, a, a little bit more. So, um, Sweet. a little longer. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, for that. I needed it. Thanks doc. I needed it. You're so positive. What's, uh, what's the latest? Yeah, how have you been this week? I know that uh, you haven't been with us in the afternoons, but now it's Friday night. How's, how's your week been? Week's been, um, there's a little thing I've invented called multitasking. <laughs> There's, uh, I will tell you as a physician, it is, I've never had, so I think I told you in May, I'll have been a doctor for 40 years, which is wow. astounding to me. Um, and I've never had a month where not more than five to seven minutes went by without some communication coming, you know, which is fine. It's just what's going on in life. But the, you know, the emails and the texts and the phone calls, and there's so many people who have so many questions, um, I will say that you know one of the things. Oh, one of the things that just warmed my heart was um, you know there there are people traveling from all over the country to come to New York. Healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. It was a nurse from Portland, Oregon, who just got on a plane. Wow. Came here to work at NYU Langone. I mean, so I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it, it really does warm your heart. I will tell you something that's in the news, which um, <clears throat> I'm actually going to be doing a CBS Sunday morning straight to camera on uh, at 9 a.m. this Sunday. Um, I've been doing them once a week, sort of what's new and what's on my mind about coronavirus. And this one's going to be about um, embracing science. So we, we, we can't embrace each other <laughs> very easily right now, but we can still embrace science. And you're hearing this big controversy about hydroxychloroquine, for example, which okay. is the malaria drug, Plaquenil. And should you take it? Should you not take it? And I think that the bottom line of it all is that this is no time to abandon science. If it works, great. Everybody wants it to work, but there are lots of other therapies out there. We got to try them all. And even though when you're in the hospital as a physician right now, or as a clinician, and you're feeling helpless, you're, of course, you're going to throw the kitchen sink at, you know, when people come in so sick, you're giving them everything. So, so patients are coming in and they're getting steroids and they are getting hydroxychloroquine often, and they're getting Zithromax and they're getting zinc and they're getting all sorts of other things. So it's hard to figure out what's, if it works, what is working and which is why you need these clinical trials, these controlled studies. So I'm happy to report that I, I found out they are happening now. Um, the clinical trials are happening. People are trying to take a good close look and to see, you know, what works and what doesn't work. And we should have no dog in the fight. I mean, it's just, we, I want them all to work um, as you're looking for your dog. Right? Hey. <laughs> Um, anyway, that's that. So that made me feel good to learn that number one, the antibody test, which is going to look to see if we're immune, that's coming along. They're starting to light a fire under doing it probably in a week. Tony Fauci said in about a week or so, it's, we're going to see more of them. Gosh, do we ever need that to find out who has had it, who didn't realize they had yeah. it? Maybe, just maybe we're immune and protected. I hope that means that we can go back uh, to the worst. So it doesn't have to be this choice between saving the economy right. and treating COVID. Um, so that's happening. That's good news. Slightly fewer admissions to New York hospitals, uh, although they're still very filled. Um, but can you believe the spirit that people have? Can you believe how all across the country 
People are coming together. Just when you reach a point in the world where you start to think, gosh, are we were at each other's throats, and then suddenly something happens that unifies us against the common enemy. Gee, did anybody ever think of doing that before? Um, and now and now you see these amazing acts of kindness, which in which I include you appearing on Stars in the House and, and giving me a, a face that hurts from smiling. So that's mm -hmm. my spiel for the day. You're so positive, Dr. LaPook. All right, well, all I can say is that Jessica says, Dr. LaPook, thank you for all you're doing. And Jessica is a very handsome man. <laughs> Look at that photo. <laughs> Anna. All right, Dr. LaPook, we love your t-shirt. We're gonna bring you back, say goodbye. Don't go nowhere, please. Um, Anna Gaster, Dr. LaPook keeps saying, we have to keep in touch with our friends. By the way, this is like our actually hanging out together, which is really nice. <laughs> We think it's very important for you to always keep in touch with your friends. So Rachel Dratz said, you're good pals with this gentleman. We thought he'd say hi. Hi, Kevin Cahoon. Hi. 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 This is the greatest surprise ever. Aww. Oh, I love you guys. Are you, in Texas? You. Are you down there in Texas? I'm in Texas with my mom. Yeah. Oh, I, I love have been For the whole, you know. What city? Whole, uh, Houston, near Houston. About. Are you from Houston? I am. I went to school oh. in the Woodlands. Oh, we're about 45 minutes from the Woodlands, north. Oh, you're yeah. north? Yeah, yeah. But I went to um, HSPVA before me arts high school. Um, gotcha. He did not. I did not. And he regrets it. Not. But the Woodlands is very cool. Um, yeah. And we can talk about that off record. <laughs> <laughs> Offline, as it were. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at Steve Cahoon. I feel like we're at Bar Central, guys. I oh, mean, yeah. Oh, hey. We usually we usually have we 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 usually make Cahoon our reward after we do something like this. Like if we do like a benefit or if we do we host something for you know like a like we do this we do a big awards thing together every year. We always are our our little um, cherry on the Sunday. Right. So we meet Cahoon afterwards and have ourselves a little talk it down. And we get we get down down and dirty. We do, we do. I don't know each other from from Rocky Horror. Kevin Cahoon and I met in the Vom, the Vomitorium <laughs> at the Circle in the Square. Yeah, we did. Doing the Rocky. Kevin and I, and we know each other from Minsky's. Kevin and I were in Minsky's. Together. Yep. So he's our show. He's our show pal. Each of us found ourselves mm -hmm. our our show pal and Kevin Cahoon, and then realized that we were all friends, and so we 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 hang out together. Yeah. That's yeah. so sweet. Now, P.S., you know, people are donating right now, and we always get just a couple. So, Anna, I just sent you some. Can you, oh. um, do, you have your, do you have your phone with you? I do. Can you read them as just some signature? Oh, yeah. I love you. Oh, my gosh. This is so nice. Okay. So, um, uh, Danny from New York donated 100 bucks, which is great. Do I say the amount? Yeah. Yes. But we want a character. Oh, nice. Danny, wait a minute. a character, Anna. Did, what am I doing? Give me, give me a character. Give me little Martha, some Bobby, somebody that SNL doesn't own. Oh, uh, Martha Stewart. I can't, how dare you put me on the spot, Rachel Josh? Go do your Martha. Wait, why don't you do a Mississippi counter? Maybe she will, the second one. Well, I can't remember how I do anybody. Okay. Do um do I know do uh the NPR lady? This is Sophie from Illinois. I'm pimping. Ooh, that was good. She uh, Sophie gave fifteen dollars. That's small. Wow, fifteen is like seven coffees. It's a big sacrifice. The smallest smile. Jeffrey from Florida gave twenty five dollars, and Paul from Maryland gave two hundred and fifty dollars. So he's he's ten times as passionate as Jeffrey. Maybe just ten times richer. <laughs> not, not as pa they're all passion. Passion has no price tag. <laughs> Good times. Uh, Good a a a April from California gave fifty dollars, and Diamonique from Texas gave twenty five. <clears throat> Diamonique means diamond in Spanish. Liana from New York gave seventy five dollars, <laughs> and 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 Barton from Illinois gave five hundred dollars. Good times. Good times. It's me. It's fun. Let's do it. See, I just love her. Let me down her. Hold on, the next batch. But Anna, yeah. what I love is that I actually almost want to be that person because she is so happy. 
She's so she's really pleased with life. She's a very, very calm person. She's a very calm person. And she doesn't have high expectations because she's on public radio. She's just a pleasant person. Hey, Kevin, give me a story about Anna or Rachel that maybe not, not everybody knows. You can choose either one. Um, 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 oh my gosh, there's so many. There's so <laughs> many. Say it again. Don't touch your face. Don't touch my face. Don't right. I know, yeah. Don't touch, or at least washed right after. That's right. My mom is right here and she said, yes, don't touch your face. So <laughs> um, I would say that, well, Rachel went to a psychic when we were doing Menskis. And I went to the dressing room before show, which was my ritual. And I was like, how was the day? She said, I went to a psychic today. And the psychic told me that we were going to close out of town. <laughs> the, psychic said, the psychic said we are not going on to Broadway. <laughs> he was right. The psychic was right. But also the psychic also told, this is the same. Okay, so I don't go to a lot of psychics, right? But a friend brought me to this channeler person. So I went on my birthday. It was my 40th birthday. She told me I was gonna have a baby. And I was like, oh, I bet you say that to every woman that walks in here, because I was 43. I, I got pregnant like nine months later, total. Like I had a baby and the show did not go to Broadway. So it was crazy. She was she was spot on, but it was pretty funny. And he's like, what'd she say? And I was like, this show isn't going anywhere. <laughs> but wait a minute, Rachel, did you ever go to her again after that? Um, I did, yeah, but like, you know, all the earth shattering things had happened. So it was like cool to go back, but it, it would, there wasn't anything else coming up the pipe. <laughs> I went back, I went to her based on this. Oh, right. Nothing, nothing, nothing. nothing. dry. Well, a few people went cause I had talked about her and no one else had like the crazy experience that I did, but you, you never know, man. It's like it's the most random. We went, I went to one at a birthday party and she was, she was much more interested in my friend. And as I left, she was like, oh, uh, Oprah's gonna call you. And literally I was like, I think not even doing a show or anything. I was like, Oprah's not gonna call. And two days later, we did that thing from SNL where they, she like went back and I don't know, did something on the women of Saturday Night Live. It was completely bizarre. Like I I, stuck, I stopped in the middle of the street when I, I was, my manager called, I was like, hey, they want to film you guys for the Oprah Winfrey show. And I, it was the most bizarre thing because it wasn't, she was, I was such an afterthought to her. She was like much more interested in my friend and his, his marriage and stuff. And it was the same, it was the same psychic? No, no. Yeah. No, yeah. This, this is a party psychic, but I was like, Oprah, like who, it just seems so random, like to have, to say that out of the blue. You know what I mean? Like, I know it was a very specific thing. I think it's specific that the premiere that I saw, which I love, someone has a question about, can we talk about wine country? Because it's been 11 months and I have questions, specifically with Kathy and Tammy, who the hell Rebecca slept with Devin? Anybody? Okay. The person, I think the person has been hounding yes. on Twitter. Yes, this is, this is the same this. person. They're obsessed with this. But you didn't write it, so how would you know? I don't know. I just figured, I don't know, sometime in there, I wasn't like doing my whole, I'm not like a method actor, sorry. <laughs> You just read the lines and move on. Time in there, my character. I didn't construct this. Our job is to make my character slept with Devin the Paella chef. And whoever this is is obsessed with me. I have a lot of downtime. I don't have the answers. All right. You listen. James just pointed to Ulysses and then you appear. It turns out you're psychic. I know. I literally just, said, I just pointed to our little magic. show flow and Ulysses, Ulysses has to do the magic and then you appear. Yep. So that's the first you're magic a genius. trick. All right, so Kevin, Already done. peace out. Loved having you here. I love Thank that. Thank you for having me. Love Kevin, you, guys. I love you. So glad love we you saw you. you. Kevin, you had your mom. Virtual. Okay. Hi, guys. Thanks, Bye. Ben. Hi, Kevin. And now let's have a little Ulysses. So, so we should leave camera or do we need to be yeah, on what's the, the best trick? Thing here? Just show, we're all set up here. You get to see everything. It's really fun. We have, um, where's my camera at? There's maybe it should be Rachel and you guys. Here, I'm, we're gonna get ourselves yeah. off. Okay. So here, Charlie, and do you mind helping me figure out how to get this guy? Um, do I, can I flip this around? Oh, I see what I have to do. I have to go around here this way. Is that right? Yes, you can't film from. Okay, is that you? So are they gonna be able to see your mat? There we go. Yeah, this should work. You guys see everything? No. We, we did before. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So sure they can see your hands. Okay, I have a couple tricks. A couple aren't so serious, and some are a little more. Uh, first, uh, just gonna take a coin, right? Watch this. What? All right. That was amazing. 
<laughs> All right, now, Mom. Yeah. Can you do this one? Okay. See, I have two foam balls. Take one, put it in that hand, and now take this one. Okay. Put it in yours. Okay, one. And yep. now if I just go abracadabra, grab a race from my hand, and goes. What? Into your hand. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> All right. You've got the gift. And now some card tricks. All right. So uh, I would usually like tell you to pick a card, but you can't really. So I just say I'll card. pick one. Okay. This one. Yep. Show them what the, what it is though. All right. So everybody see it? Don't let me see it. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter, but just don't let me see it. Okay. Go hold it carefully here. There. Okay. Got it. Every shot. All right. Yeah. So now, take it and just put it in the deck. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to give it shuffle. Uh, would you like me to shuffle it again? Sure. Sure. Unless it will mess you up. Yes, we'd like it, please. Thank you. All right. One more time, or am I good? Third yeah. time, please. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, I may. Uh, yeah. All right. Now. Do you want to show your face again? Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna ring for it like that. Just tell me when to stop. Stop. There. All right. So I shuffled sure. the deck. Right. I had put the card in and shuffled the deck. It was completely lost. Correct. Yeah. Yep. You want to stop? And you stopped on your card. This is your card? Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know how people do stuff like that. That's amazing. Oh, good. Hey, listen, how old are you now? Um, I have one more. I have oh. Lizzie, how old are you? How old are you? I'm twelve. Okay. I He's knew you Pisces before too. you were born. Pisces is a Pisces too. Hey, Pisces, Scorpio Moon though. That's my mean part. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, this trick, I'm going to need the box, and I'm going to need two helper cards at first. So, like this. Here. I use the two black kings. Let me see them. Yep. And now, again, tap any card, mama. This one. Mm -hmm. So... Let me see. Mm -hmm. You everybody seen it? Mm -hmm. All right, now take that card, put it in between the two kings. Now we're gonna put them aside for now, for a second. And now we're going to need another two helper cards. So we're gonna do the two black. Make sure they can see the cards. Well, the, the two black. Here, I'll just do the a red and a black jack. And um all right. So now so red jack, black jack. Right? And empty box. Right? So I just so now I want to put these two cards in the box and we'll put them aside. Yeah, Mama Rose, we can hear you. Go on. <laughs> I was gonna say, Anna's a magician, Mom. Yeah. Magician, Mom, whatever. He's very good. He's gotta practice. <laughs> All right, and now remember our thing. Uh, your card and yeah. the other king and other the other king. And so now, Mom. Yep. Take that. And, um, what did I drop a card? All right. And now, with these two card, these three cards, right? If I snap, wave, rub it, turns to just two. Mm -hmm. Card in between. <laughs> and then. The assistant. 
There is. Wait, there was nothing in there. Whoa. But how do I know Anna Gaster didn't sneak it in? I didn't. You could see the box the whole time. <laughs> I have to, I have to show one more thing. Yeah, they're going to show you one more thing. I have just one more thing that I was supposed to do before. Okay, because I don't trust that. That was so sudden. I don't trust that, that woman in the background. <laughs> you could see the box the whole time. It was <laughs> That's true in the background. All right. Uh, this one just kind of, <laughs> this one's kind of uh, just like weird trick. I have my my magic box. I take any card, do the four of clubs. I close my box over it. I wave and snap. Uh -huh. Disappears. Whoa. And that is my those are my tricks. Yeah. I'm so impressed you with this, and you did it live. I'm so impressed. Yes. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna bring you back. So practice because this show's going on for a long time. So we need three more tricks. We need more. Yeah, so start practicing. Come back. Do you guys think that if we do a remake at the holidays, that maybe it's COVID outside, that that would take away the date rape aspect? Hashtag too soon. First of all, that was hilarious at every level. I guess so wait. God. I have to two things. Maybe oh, it's COVID outside. I really can't say. I'm fine. Yeah. I know everyone talks about the Debbie Downer sketch, but I just want to discuss what made you laugh so hard. Did the trombone come in early? Is that what happened? No, I just I just flubbed a little line, and then I don't know. I was you know when you have a when you have a character you're excited about, and you're doing it the first time in SNL, you're like so nervous because you're like, well, I got a good feeling with this, but who knows what can happen? So I was just extra nervous about. It. So then I flubbed a line, and I don't know what it was. I just started laughing. There's no real reason, but then. The fact that it was coming in on me like every time and I knew I just was sad for just me. It was like a church laugh gone out of control. It is a gift that will never stop giving. Oh, it puts me in the best way. Here, let's just watch it. it every time. Every time. Laugh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Did you guys hear about that train explosion in North Korea? Media is so sensitive. Media so sensitive. So secretive. So So Rachel Drafts, check your email. We just sent you the I next batch. I saw that, yeah. Okay. You have an option to read them as Debbie Downer or as Boston Lady. Oh, Boston Lady? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, uh, maybe I'll do um the Boston Lady. Um, all right, Samantha from Chen. Oh, which are you to Samantha? Because yeah, it's not a downer. There's so much downer going on right now, I feel like. Yeah, do okay. the Boston. I know. I'll do it from I'll do it as um the lovers, the professor. Samantha from Tennessee gave twenty dollars. Oh, Gina from South Carolina gave ten dollars. <laughs> Raylan from Illinois another ten dollars. Cheryl from California gave fifty. I hope she's spending this evening cuddled up with her lover. Oh. <laughs> from Colorado gave twenty-five, and Ashton from Ontario gave two hundred dollars, and that's a lot of goat meat. <laughs> Well played. <laughs> well, okay. So, in in conclusion, oh, um, oh my God, everyone, there's so many people that are obsessed with all of our old stories. All right, so I basically forced Anna into singing something. I sent her a track. <laughs> Anna, everyone's gonna love this. By the way, people are asking how you got the role of Elphaba. How did you get the role of Elphaba? Did you have Elphaba? to? Elphaba. Elphaba. <laughs> I auditioned in the old-fashioned way. I I auditioned. I was. I mean, you know. So, quick, briefly. I was up for the role in the very, very, very beginning. Um, and I was still on SNL and I, I went in for the final, I think it was like right after 9-11. It was really a crazy, crazy callback situation. Um, and then I ended up, anyway, it's a long story, but yeah, that, and so then I went away and then I did my last season of SNL and I did Rocky Horror and then the show, I saw the show and I was like, oh my God, I got to play that role. I would love to one day. And um, when I left SNL, like we talked about it and worked really hard. And then they called and uh, to, when they, when, when Adina left, I went in to, and auditioned a proper audition. And what did you have to sing both big songs? Uh, yeah. You have to sing Fine Gravity. You have to sing. 
God, it, I can't remember. It was such a terror show. Um, I think you have to sing I'm Not That Girl because it's so low. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or at least a piece of it. And then, um, yeah, I think it was Defying Gravity and I'm Not That Girl, if I'm remembering correctly. Did Rachel know the story about your relative, you don't have to say who it is, that was shocked by the weeping in the audience? It's such a good story. I mean, but it's five to nine. That's <laughs> It's not going to take that long. We're not long. going anywhere and there are no commercials. Go. Yeah, just tell the story for Rach. Uh, my relatives came to see Defying Gravity, uh, my Indiana relatives, like a big. Oh, wicked, by the way, not Defying Gravity, but. <laughs> it was about Defying Gravity. So we go see, we go see, they go see Wicked in Chicago, you know, tearjerker. Everybody sobs at that song, obviously. And um, people were. Um, People were, I'm not gonna get to set this up right, but anyway, we, we went out for pizza, we went for noodles, we went for pasta. So I got a bunch of them, like 15, very stoic, um, I mean, super kind uh, Midwestern relatives. I don't know how else to put it. And so we um, were sitting there and everybody was talking about the good parts of the show and what they loved and the humor parts and the moving parts of this. And this one um, male Indiana relative pipes up in the middle of everybody and it has like poses the question to the group. He says, now, uh, during the big number at the end of the first half, he almost said before halftime, uh, the, uh, there was a man next to me and he was crying. Now what would make a person do something like that. I mean, truly could not like get his brain around the idea that somebody would cry in the theater. Like, and Seth had like a million options for the reasons that somebody might cry, but the, you know, maybe really related to the, to the protagonist, to the, the, the tale of alienation in Wicked, maybe very moved by the spectacle, right? The sound of instruments and the live voice. What else, what other reasons could we have? The courage that it takes to go against convention. Right, right. Do yeah. The joy of seeing such brilliance all around you. It's yeah. emotional. Very, very emotional for lots of people. So everybody's stunned into silence. Everybody's considering how to answer this question. Everybody's trying to think of like, how can I define for this guy why that why it would be moving to hear a, 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 a song and make you cry. And finally, one other cousin pipes up and he says, maybe his wife had passed. That was his pitch. <laughs> that, that was the only possible reason that a man could cry in the theater was the passing of a spouse. Wow. <laughs> the passing of a spouse. That was still, he yeah. had one had hundred percent processed. Yeah. Oh my God. It's so weird. Maybe, maybe, maybe his wife had passed. You know what? We we're all like, you know, maybe I could have probably was it. Probably now we it. hear your version of the song, which I just recorded. Uh, you did. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It was on your iPhone. Right. Okay. The sound check was at the, the it was made at ten to eight. The sound check was at five to eight. Let me ask you something. If I, you know, Seth, I always forget lyrics. Can you see yeah. me if I do this? Yeah. Um, I told you the the, I, the 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 hard the hard drive empties out. Yeah, I got it right here. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, boy, the lyrics have the whole fight beforehand. All right. Oh, so should we do it? Should I sing it? Um, I think so. Great. The song gets real high. No right, do, I, do I have to do anything else or just sing? No, just enjoy it. It's such a pretty version. It's from your album, your first album. It is from I'm Hip. All right, ready? Yeah, you don't have to be too close to the mic. Am I too close? You may be because it goes high. No, I won't bell. Don't worry. You can sing that part. I'm ready. Yeah, can I do that part? Do you mind? I it's not a version, but yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I would love it. Okay, ready? Cool. Say when. Say hit it. Downbeat. Can you hear it? Yes, it's beautiful. Something has changed within me. Something is not the same. I'm through with playing by the rules of someone else's game. Too late for second guessing. Too late to go back to sleep. 
It's time to trust my instincts. Close my eyes and leave. It's time to try to find gravity. I think I'll try to find gravity, and you can pull me down. I'm through accepting limits. Someone says they're so. Some things I cannot change, but till I try, I'll never know. Too long I've been afraid of losing love. I guess I've lost. And if that's love, it comes at much too high a cost. I'd sooner by defy gravity. Kiss me goodbye. I'm defying gravity, and you can't pull me down. So if you care to find me. Look to the western sky, as someone told me lately. Everyone deserves a chance to fly, and if I'm flying so low, at least I'm flying free. To those who'd ground me, take a message back from me. Tell them how I am defying gravity. I'm flying high, defying gravity, and you can't pull me down. You can't pull me down. You can't pull me down. There you go. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Sorry, everyone. The comments are so amazing. I can't even tell you. Like, it was so that was so beautiful. It's just what everybody needed. Put us in the best mood. That was perfect. That was so. Hold on. I muted poor Rachel. Someone told us to mute herself. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Yay! Uh, we can right, do so this. We can do this. Stay inside. Stay healthy. Inside. Wash your hands. I want to have like a reunion of the ladies of SNL. So we're going to talk about that. Wouldn't that love be it. fun? Yeah, um, we're, we would love it. We're loud. We're loud when we get together. Loud. That's fine. That's that's what the mute button is for. Watch this. Muted. <laughs> <laughs> and she's back. She's a magician, mom. Tomorrow, <laughs> are plays hey, in the house. what? Hey, Anna, you set us up. Tomorrow, two p.m. plays in the house. David Lindsay Bear, Funny Mirrors. I'm so excited! I can't wait. Love we both have been him. David Lindsay Bear shows. We love him. And yeah. by, uh, passive aggressive. I asked Anna for David's um, information, and I sent the longest email. And then he's like, "This is David Lindsay Bear's wife." You gave me Mrs. Lindsay Bear's <laughs> text. Frau <laughs> Lindsay Bear. Frau Lindsay Bear. Frau Lindsay Bear. It was mortifying. Uh, wait, wait. Her, name Chris. Her name is Chris, and she's I lovely. Can. So uh, years. I'm so looking forward to this. I have to tell you, but I've literally set an alarm, and my daughter Frances is so excited because she's going to go study playwriting next year. She's tonight. She was watching Kenny Lonergan's play. This is our youth. She couldn't even be bothered with coming out to do this because she's know. watching all. Of, and then, and then Fleabag. They're also airing. Did you see that? The original one woman show on Amazon Prime. Oh, um, yeah, they're doing that also for also to help with with relief efforts. So it's there's all this great theater happening in the name of service, and it makes me so uh, proud to be a, 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 um, a, a artist, a member of the Thespian Society. I love that. 
So that's tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. And, and then, then tomorrow then night with Kristen Chenoweth. Oh. Yeah. We have, a, I don't know if we can announce it yet, but there's a big birthday can, celebration. No, no, the press release has been out. Oh. We're, ha we're having a birthday for the original wizard, Joel Gray's 88th oh birthday. Oh my God, that's awesome. And we're going to have a birthday party with a lot of surprise guests. So that's tomorrow night, 8 p.m. And then Sunday night, my favorite, Desperate Housewives reunion. But we just found, but we just confirmed. Oh, Sunday afternoon. Actually, Sunday matinee, because Sunday night they're doing that. They're re airing the live. Just we do a little get in? Don't walk. Keep out. Oh my God, it does sound like that. It sounds like that. That's true. But we have Sunday afternoon. Who is it? We have um, Brandon uh, Victor Dixon. Yeah, Norm Lewis, Alice Cooper, Jason Tam, and this guy, up, up as he always likes to say, this up and comer, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Oh, good for him. He's going to be with us. He's got to keep plugging. Wow. He's exactly. right. He got asked. He's going to have his Evita <laughs> album in back of him, like your I'm hip. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Can you imagine? Please buy. Oh my gosh. All right. Um, and other than that, you want to roll the credits? I'll see yes. if the dogs will come out. Hold on. I have the new credit that Jack made for us. Where are the credits? Hold on. Jack made our credits. Make Where the are credits. they again? Oh, there they are. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus for Easter, I just put it together. That's right. Put that together. Gloria. Who's the Western Scott? Here, Anna, here's a classical. Yeah. All right, peace I'll out. Bring out Dr. LaPook. Oh, Dr. LaPook's got to say goodbye. Bye. Wait, that was meine Heisem Lach dich nicht. Oh, that's not for you. Ah, still, baby. Here's our Chrissy. Here's Chrissy. Here's one of our. Man, he's not oh, happy. You can Man, help this oh. dog, or you can turn the. Bye, we miss you. Bye, Lana, and cut. Guys, thank you for having me. Thank you. Say hello. Bye.